Hallelujah, Jesus. I wonder if we could lift up our hands all over this sanctuary. The Holy Ghost is so, so very evident in this place. God, we love you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, I'm so thankful for your presence that's in this place. God, I pray that you would move and minister to every heart of my life today in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, God. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Great is your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you that you are here today. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. I pray that you would go forth today. God, and do a great work in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, God. Oh, when I think about the Lord, how we saved me, how we raised me, how we filled me with the Holy Ghost.
Lift up your hands. Do you feel all right in this place? Thank you, Jesus. I've been changed in Jesus' name. And I feel all right. I don't know about you today, but I'm in the house of the Lord. And I feel all right. I feel great in the house of the Lord. I, he has saved me. He has changed me. I'm not what I once was. If you have that testimony right now, raise your hands. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Well, there's a mighty move of God in this place. I feel great. Amen. Just want to dive right into the prayer needs that we have today. Let's remember Sister Georgia and our prayers, Sister Wagner's father, and let's remember Brother Hinton as he's recovering from surgery. And uh, let's remember Sister Stover today. She's here, but she needs some strength in her body. If a few ladies would gather around here as we begin to pray that God would strengthen her. Let's take these knees before the Lord today, God. We praise you right now, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing in this place and the spirit of God that we feel in the Holy Ghost moving. We pray and bring these needs before you today, God. Touch Sister Georgia, Lord. Touch her body, Lord. Touch her need and her situation right now, God. Lord, touch Sister Wagner's father, Jesus. Lord, move in that need right now, God. Brother Hinton, Lord, give him a speedy and a quick recovery, Lord. Build him back and restore him to complete again, Jesus. Touch his body, Lord, that you would receive all glory, God. Touch Sister Silver right now, God, that you would strengthen her, Jesus, that you would heal and touch her body, God. Lord, right now, this great elder in our church, that you would touch her, Jesus. Lord, we know that you are able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we ask, God. We know that you're the answer to every need that we brought to you today. Every need in this house, God, every hand lifted up. You are the answer to that need, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Just a few announcements uh, to remind you of our regular scheduled service. Tonight, 5.30 prayer, 6 o'clock service. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock prayer, 7.30 Bible study. Um, pastor's been teaching on a series, and I'm excited to hear that continue. Um, I know God is going to feed us with his word. Friday night, youth night, uh, we'll be meeting for prayer and devotion. Let me tell you what, we've been having some prayer before devotion, before Bible study on our youth nights, and God is moving in our midst. We usually pray for 15 to 20 minutes, but I tell you, a couple weeks ago when we began to pray, we prayed for almost an hour, and everybody was just walking in the Holy Ghost and praying. And God is in our midst, and I am so thankful for some young people that know how to pray and get a hold of God. October 23rd, mark your calendars. We're having a youth rally right here at PRC. We've reached out to Brother Aaron Combs. He's going to be preaching, and it's going to be awesome. I'm excited for it. I know God is going to move, and we're going to have fellowship. We're going to have some incredible church. Um, and uh, that's all for the announcements, ties, and offering. I invite you to bring forth your tithes and offering. If you're joining us online, you can text the word GIVE to the information on the screen. Let's bring our tithes before the Lord today.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I am so thankful for the presence of the Lord in this house today. Amen. To all of our guests that are with us, either in person or online, thank you for joining us today. We trust the presence of the Lord ministers to you in a very special way. It's also so good to see so many people that have had to be out because of COVID back in the house of the Lord. There's nothing like the family of God nothing like the family of God. I'll tell you what, even if there was no promise of heaven and hell, if it all ended when we took our last breath, I would still choose to be a part of the family of God because there's nothing like the body of Christ. Amen. If you would stand with me this morning as we go into the word of the Lord, stand in honor of the reading of God's word. We're going to Acts chapter 10, verses 1 through 2, and then verses 44 through 48. Looking forward to tonight's service. I believe that God has given me a word for this church for tonight. Um, most of us are unaware, and, and that's perfectly fine. I'm thankful we don't have a lot of people given to drama in this church that if they stub their toe in the middle of the night, the whole, the entire world has to know about it. But there are incredible struggles going on in people's lives all over this house many that you don't are not even aware of and uh, we are praying for them and God is going to help us and help in those needs but I promise you this we're all going to join at the foot of Calvary tonight and we're going to be praying for one another and we're going to remember Calvary and God's going to come in and God's going to help us it, it may not eradicate the situation but I promise you there's going to be a strength from heaven and a strength from our brothers and sisters When you're in the middle of a struggle, the best place you can be is in the presence of Almighty God. It makes all the difference in the world. Amen. Amen. 
And uh, I love the songs we sing this morning, what the Lord has done for us. And I, it felt so good to go back to my day, my young days. And I'm still young, my very early young days. And uh, what y'all laughing about over there? I just want to know. I just want to know. And sing about the Holy Ghost. Is anyone thankful for the Holy Ghost? You know what? I just mentioned people going through struggles, and I've been there, you've been there. But in the middle of that, if you had the Holy Ghost, you had something to rejoice about. You had something to give God thanks about. Amen? It's not just an emotional experience, although you will get emotional. It's the Spirit of Jesus Christ coming and inhabiting your life. I know he's omnipotent, but when you get the Holy Ghost, he comes inside of you. I know he's omnipresent. He's everywhere at all times, but when you get the Holy Ghost, he is living inside of you. I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We're going to continue our series on the Holy Ghost. Last week, we got sidetracked. The Lord had a something else in mind for us, but we're going to pick up in Acts chapter 10. And looking over this congregation, I think the majority of people here have received the Holy Ghost and experienced it. But I think it's still important that we talk about it. And the Holy Ghost is not just a talking in tongues experience. It will help us every day of our life. And there's a portion here in Acts 10 that I think is really going to help us in this day and climate that we are living in today. Acts chapter 10, there was a certain man in Caesarea, verse 1, called Cornelius a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, a one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Verse number 44, the tail end of the story, or the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say. While Peter yet spake these words, he's preaching to Cornelius, his family and friends that had gathered in his house. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell in on them, which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles, those nasty Gentiles, also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord that's an amen point. Commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. I just want to point out there, Peter preached to them. They got the Holy Ghost. They were baptized. And I love that last phrase of verse 10. They prayed the preacher, Peter, to tarry certain days. When you're full of the Holy Ghost, you want the preacher around. If you're like, oh, the pastor's coming my way. I'm headed the other way. You might want to check your Holy Ghost tank. It may need to be refilled. Oh, it's getting really quiet on here. I can preach without notes. You don't want that to happen today. Let's lift our hands. Let's talk to God all over this house. God has something for us today. God, I love you. I thank you for the people of God that have gathered. Thank you for your presence and your power. Thank you for the opportunity to gather together in your house with, with my brothers and my sisters. I thank you for the presence of God that has filled this place. Thank you for the privilege uh, of hearing the preached word of God. Help us to receive what you have for us. Uh, and God, I would be nothing, I would nothing would make me happier than for everyone here to be refilled with the Holy Ghost today. We need you inside of us and we give you glory, honor, and praise. Uh, would you lift your hands and your voice and give him praise in this house today? All right, that's a good funeral prayer. Now let's lift our voice and give him praise today. I'm here to have church. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Blessings and glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated. It feels good in the house of the Lord today. To our tech and media team, thank you for all you do to broadcast this, especially to Brother and Sister Galindo that take care of the live stream. I want to just give you a heads up. I noticed your mat underneath your keyboard, a mass, mat, mouse pad over there. 
It's this large mat. It's got a picture of a grumpy cat or something on it. And at the bottom, it says, are you done yet? I'm glad to tell you I have about half the number of pages I normally do, Brother and Sister Galindo, so it will not take me long to be done. And someone say, thank the Lord. Amen, amen. Appreciate all that they do to make, make our text stream happen. We have been teaching and preaching from the book of Acts. And Acts chapter 2 is specifically about the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Is anyone thankful for the Holy Ghost today? And Acts chapter 2 is the initial infilling of the Holy Ghost. We find that when they received the Holy Ghost, they spoke in tongues. There's figurative language in there about a sound of wind and tongues like as a fire. But that was not very literal. It was very figurative. We covered that. There are those that will say the speaking in tongues was simply to overcome the communication barrier in Acts chapter 2 because people gathered around and said, how is it uh, that these unlearned fishermen are speaking in this language? They do not know it. Uh, so they say tongues was just a breakthrough the communication barrier. However, that is not the case because after they were speaking in tongues and the crowd gathered around, there was still preaching that pricked their hearts. We find that very good people received the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. The 120 disciples, including Mary, the mother of Jesus. Honey, let me just tell you, if Mary needed the Holy Ghost, you certainly need the Holy Ghost. Amen. You say, well, man, that's some, that's some high caliber people. Yes, it was, but it wasn't just the inside group. It wasn't just the inside crowd and that high caliber level of people because there was a group of 3,000 outside of that place that day that were not in that inner circle. They were the outsiders, we could say, and before the day was over, they had been filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name as well. It doesn't matter if you're a good person on the inside or someone on the outside, the Holy Ghost will benefit your life greatly. We also found out this isn't just something to check off of your bucket list, but you need the Holy Ghost in order to be saved. Peter preached the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They said, what do we have to do to be saved? He did not say simply believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved, although that is part of the process. But he said, you must repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that promise wasn't just for Acts 2, but the promise is to you and your children and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. He's still pouring it out today. Someone give the Lord a hand and clap of praise. The next time we preached on the Holy Ghost, it was from Acts chapter 8. And Acts chapter 8 was in the city of Samaria with a bunch of people that were heathen at best. And so we found out that the Holy Ghost was poured out on those that even seemed like pagans and heathens. The, the, the preaching of Philip came to that city and revival broke out. And there was great joy. There were baptisms. There were beliefs. Uh, people believing on the Lord. And there were miracles uh, happening. But the Holy Ghost was a separate and distinct experience from just having good church. Thank God for good church. But the Holy Ghost was poured out in a separate and distinct experience. Uh, the Holy Ghost is more than just good church. We also found from Acts 8 that when you receive the Holy Ghost, uh, it's not just an outside feeling, but you will speak in tongues uh, as the Spirit gives the utterance. Uh, that is the initial evidence of receiving the Holy Ghost. Uh, and we learn from Acts 8 that the Holy Ghost was not just for the day of Pentecost. Uh, in Acts chapter 2, but it's still being poured out in Acts 8. In fact, the Holy Ghost has never stopped being poured out. It is for us today. Someone say amen. We get to Acts chapter 10 today, and we read about two main individuals in Acts chapter 10. The first is a man by the name of Cornelius. The second is a man by the name of Peter. Let's talk about Cornelius. Cornelius in that day was a very common name, a very specific event in history made it famous and made it common. All the way back to 82 B.C., before Christ, there was a man by the name of Cornelius Sola. 
that went in and liberated 10,000 slaves. And all 10,000 took their liberator's name to begin a brand new life. They say, I owe my life of freedom to Cornelius Sola. I will take his name. I could stop and preach right there when I was baptized in Jesus' name. I was delivered from the load of sin. I gladly take the name of Jesus Christ upon my life. It is highly possible in Acts 10 that this man by the name of Cornelius was a descendant from an emancipated slave. Cornelius had a very good life. He was over one-tenth of a Roman legion. That Italian band was not the latest R&B band, but it was a Roman legion, a Roman army, a portion of them. He led one-tenth of that legion. He had a very stable position of prestige, which afforded him quite a comfortable life. He was stationed by Roman government in the place of Caesarea. Caesarea was inhabited by the Jewish people. So he was surrounded by the Jews. And being surrounded by the people of God, he was influenced by their godliness. Let me just stop and pause and tell you that environment is very important in one's life. He was influenced by their godliness, and he began to perform acts of godliness himself. What kind of influence are you having in your world? Are the people around you gravitating towards the things of God or are they remaining comfortable? Acts 10 and 2 described the actions of Cornelius. said he was a devout man, one that feared God with all his house. It wasn't just him. He had his house fearing the Lord with him. He gave much alms to the people and he had a consistent prayer life. But there was one thing about Cornelius in that day and era that mattered. He was a Gentile. That simply meant he was not a Jewish individual. And so with him not being Jew, he was disdained and looked down upon by God's people, the Jews. We find evidence of this in Acts chapter 10 and verse 28. After we'll talk about Peter in a moment. But after God finally worked on Peter... Peter shows up in his house and he had to just throw this little thing in there which shows the prejudice between the Jews and the Gentiles at that time. Peter was basically saying in Acts 10 and 28, I'm here but you know, this was words from the Bible, how it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to come into contact with their company of one from another nation. It's like, I'm here, but I still got to just throw it out there. I'm really not supposed to be here. You better realize how blessed you really are because of the prejudice of the Jews towards the Gentiles in that day. That was Cornelius in a thumbnail sketch. The other individual was Peter. Peter was a Jewish man, and being a Jew, he had strong prejudice against the non-Jews. And God had to work harder on Peter than he did on Cornelius in order for Cornelius to be saved. God gives a vision to Peter. A sheet was let down from heaven in this vision with all manners of unclean animals in it. And a voice says to Peter, rise up and eat. And Peter said, oh no, Lord, I'm not supposed to have that stuff. And the vision happened again. It happened three times, actually, uh, and a voice spoke to Peter. He said, I can't have that unclean stuff. I can't have the bacon and the pork chops. Thank God for that vision. Hallelujah. I can't have that stuff. And uh, God spoke to him. He said, what God has cleansed, uh, do not call common. And as soon as the vision is over, look at the timing of God. As soon as the vision is over, a knock comes at the door. And there's three men from Cornelius' house. And the Holy Ghost speaks to Peter and says, go with these three men. They are seeking you. Go with them and do not doubt a thing. That vision came to let Peter know it's okay to go to that un clean Gentile's house. God had to work on Peter to break down the prejudice for him to go to Cornelius' house. I just got to pause for a moment and I think it's very applicable. I've got to preach about this issue right here because we are in a very divided day in America. The mass media has broken it, has uh, has caused that rift even greater. Uh, but I'm here to preach to you that a baptism of the Holy Ghost will remove uh, all uh, prejudice. 
I've come to preach to you. I wish somebody believed that today uh, the Holy Ghost uh, will break down walls of separation uh, between cultures uh, and races. Uh, Red uh, and yellow, uh, black uh, and white, uh, they are all precious uh, in His sight. Uh, God sent a vision. God sent a vision. Uh, It wasn't a man-made idea, but it was a God idea saying, Peter, uh, you need to get rid of your prejudice uh, so you can go and convert a Gentile that needs to hear the gospel uh, and that Gentile Cornelius uh, it opened up the door for you uh, and I uh, I know we're various colors and cultures here uh, but we have one thing in common uh, we are all Gentile non-Jew uh, and God broke down the prejudice in Peter's life uh, and opened the door so I can have a relationship with God uh, and you can have a relationship with God uh, I'm here to tell you the Holy Ghost uh, is uh, for everybody and every culture and every people and every tribe and all nations every every culture every race we are all equal at the foot of Calvary someone ought to thank God for the Holy Ghost right now scripture repeatedly backs this thought process up look at Colossians chapter 3 and 11 where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Galatians 3 and 28, there's neither Jew nor Greek, neither bond nor free, male nor female, you are all one. Hold your finger up and say one. You are one in Christ Jesus. Romans 3 and 29 Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also he is God. Romans 10, 12 through 13. There is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all them that call upon him. For whosoever, Jew, Greek, Hispanic, Caucasian, Asian, Heinz 56. African American whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved 1 Corinthians 12 13 I feel the Holy Ghost in this house you know why I feel it because we're preaching against the spirit of the day and the spirit of hell that's trying to divide God's people and the people of America every which way but greater is he that is in me that's the Holy Ghost than he that is in the world 1 Corinthians 12 and 13 by one spirit are we all baptized into one body whether we be Jews or Gentiles whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit there are not several different races there is one race it is the human race and we are all one in Jesus Christ you know what America needs right now we don't need a social leader we don't need a political leader America needs a baptism of the Holy Ghost it would erase prejudice. It would erase racial division. We need a baptism of the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands and love the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me take it a step further. I am going to get personal today. It's easy to talk about what America needs. But you know what the people in this house need right now? Because it's very easy to tune in and hear of the division and the political schisms. I don't care what side you're on. There's tension on both sides. And it's very easy, regardless of the side you're on, to start hearing the threats and the political manipulations and the political games are playing. And all of a sudden, before you realize it, your blood pressure is starting to boil. And you feel this uh in you. And it's like, oh, I'm so upset. I just want to go by all the... And, 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 and your blood is starting to boil uh, and the flesh is starting to rule and reign uh, and you're saying things uh, and there's a tone uh, and there's an attitude uh, and there's a spirit that's not of Christ upon you uh, if you find yourself uh, beginning to feel your blood pressure begin to rise uh, and your blood begin to boil a little bit uh, about the political turmoil in these last days uh, you need to go back uh, and get a refilling of the baptism of the Holy Ghost uh, it does not mean we are 
agree with it, uh, but we allow the Holy Ghost to rule uh, and reign in our hearts and souls and minds. Uh, we need a baptism of the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Holy Ghost will make you love everybody, uh, Democrat, uh, Republican, uh, Independent, uh, Socialist, uh, Libertarian. Uh, they're a soul created in the image of God. Uh, we need a baptism uh, of uh, the Holy Ghost. Uh, I encourage you uh, when you gather at your Thanksgiving to get together uh, and Christmas. Uh, some of you are looking forward to it. Uh, some of you are dreading it because you know politics are going to come up uh, and it gets ugly uh, when it comes up. Uh, you ought to start talking uh, about the Holy Ghost. Uh, you ought to start praying uh, in the Holy Ghost uh, and let the love of God uh, be shed abroad. Uh, I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost today. Uh, hallelujah. 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 You're saying what right do you have to preach about that Pastor Sansom? Uh, white privilege and on and on and on. I don't have privileges in my life. Uh, I've worked for everything I've got uh, and God has blessed me with the rest. Uh, I'm married to a Hispanic lady. Uh, I've got two kids that are that are half and half. Uh, I'm a bunch of everything. Uh, I've got an African American man right here uh, that calls me dad at times. Uh, I, you know what makes it all possible? It's uh, the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. Uh, why don't you lift your hands uh, and let the Holy Ghost baptize you right now? Uh, God, would you pour out the Holy Ghost on America once again? Uh, would you baptize us in the Holy Ghost and fire? Uh, someone intercede for your nation right now. Uh, someone pray for a baptism of the Holy Ghost in America from north to south, uh, from coast to coast. Uh, baptize America with the Holy Ghost. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord. Clap your hands and give him praise. You may be seated today. If you forget everything else I said, take that nugget home and live it for the next several weeks and months and the rest of your life. The next takeaway from this passage in Acts chapter 10 is we see the necessity of a preacher. Now I expect you to preach with me the same way you just did on this topic as well. Cornelius, he was a religious man. Cornelius was the kind of guy every pastor wishes would drop into their church because he'd be saying, I want a Bible study and I want to know everything I have to do to live for God. I mean, I haven't had that happen yet. And I'm afraid if I did, I'd have cardiac arrest. But I would love, I'd love to go into the hospital with a cardiac arrest over something like that. Cornelius, religious man, devout, feared God, gave much alms, prayed to God always. Cornelius even had a vision. Whoa, he's spiritual. Anyone here ever have a vision? I mean, not from pizza. Not, not from, from bad food, not from carne asada. But you ever have a vision from God? Not, not too many. So Cornelius, this religious man that had a vision, could not God have spoken to him in a vision to show him the way of salvation. I mean, he's doing everything right. He's religious. He has the fear of God in him. I could preach about America needing a baptism of the fear of God and the church needing a baptism of the fear of God. I could talk about him giving much alms and talk about tithes and offering for hours on the end. He would pray to God always. That, that's like praying without ceasing. Could not God have spoken to him in a vision the way of salvation the answer is no. Not pastor's answer, but a biblical answer. God instructed him to call for Peter. Everyone say a preacher. Because it has always been God's plan to use a preacher. 1 Corinthians 1 and 21. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Romans 10, 13 through 14. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? The preaching of the gospel by a man of God, it will always, everyone say always, 
it will always trump your dreams, your visions, and your angelic appearances. America's fascinated with angelic appearances. Oh, I saw an angel. It may have been an angel of deception. It may not have been an angel of heaven because Satan is an angel and he went out of heaven with a third of them. You better be careful of the angels visiting your life because Galatians 1, 8 through 9 states, though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be cursed. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than what you have received, let him be accursed. I've come to tell everyone in this house today, you need a preacher who will preach the truth of repentance, baptism in the name of Jesus, infilling of the Holy Ghost, and living a life separated to be saved. But I had a vision. Thank God for it. But does it line up with the Word of God? Does it line up with the Spirit of God? And does it line up with the man of God in your life? Cornelius had to call for a man of God to come. You don't have to call. God's given you a man of God in this church. You need a preacher to preach truth in order to be saved. Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God for truth. Thank God for the man of God. Thank God for my pastor, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I lost some of you right there. You're ready, you're ready to shout about America needing a baptism of the Holy Ghost. You need a preacher. You need a preacher. You need a preacher. You need a man of God in your life. Not someone that just marries you and buries you and baby and dedicates your babies. But you need a man of God preaching to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, lift your hands and let's love the Lord. Why don't you stretch them towards your pastor right now? You're not worshiping your pastor, but I pray God will use him. Pray God will place him in your life. Pray an anointing upon your pastor. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am so thankful for the day in which we live and that there is such an availability of information. It used to be when... I was looking for a particular scripture, and I could do it when I was 16, 17 years old. I'd get a strong concordance out, an exhaustive concordance. You know what that word exhaustive means? It means you're exhausted when you're done using it. It simply means if you're looking up a particular topic in the Bible, say you wanted to look up Holy Ghost, an exhaustive concordance is going to give you every listing that the Holy Ghost has ever mentioned in the Bible and the reference for it. And it was in about size six or eight font it was extremely small but at 16 and 17 it was no problem and you would pour for hours on end looking at this and and then from there you didn't just you didn't just touch on that reference and it flashed you to another screen you got your bible out and you flipped to that and then you went back over to this book and when you were studying you'd have your table out and you'd be covered with books everywhere now you simply say siri Give me John 4, 7, and Siri will give you John 4, 7. There is an, a, a plethora of information available to us. I am thankful for our young people that are listening to Holy Ghost Apostolic Podcast. I love nothing more than saying, oh, did you hear the message about so-and-so? Did you hear the message from so-and-so? Did you hear this thought? Did you hear that thought? I loved it last night. I'm getting ready to go to bed, and Shay comes in. He says, Dad, I, I got, I've been studying this scripture, and he just starts going through it. I'm like, whoa, I need to preach that before he does so everyone will think it's mine. There is a plethora of information. This week... I was in every service of general conference in my sweats eating dinner. It was great. There's a plethora of information. And just about everyone does their service online now. And I thank God for it. But the, 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 the concern, the danger of that is, oh, I'm going to tune in online, but I don't like what pastor's preaching. I'm going to find somebody else. 
and there is a plethora of information. And don't stop listening to the Holy Ghost podcast. Don't stop seeking out apostolic conferences and do an apostolic study to everyone in this house. There, there's apps just for truth radio, Holy Ghost radio, and on and on we could go and thank God for them. We need more of that in our life. But that should never... That should never replace the voice of your pastor and preacher in your life. Well, I heard this guy in a conference. He preaches it this way, and I, I like that better than how my pastor preaches it. And the way he's preaching it may be right for the location he's in, but your pastor has the mind of God for the unique dynamics and circumstances right here in Phoenix. Your pastor is likened unto a shepherd in the Word of God that watches out for the flock. And he knows what's right and what's wrong for this particular flock. Get all the information, but don't let it ever replace the voice of your pastor and preacher in your life. You need a preacher of truth in order to be saved. Someone thank God for his word right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so Peter goes to Cornelius' house, a preacher. And he preaches the messages in chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Peter preached the same message he always preached. Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. That's the gospel. It's the good news. He came. He died. He was buried. And he rose again. And we ought to be excited about it. Romans 6 and 4 states, We are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. We are saved by identifying with the gospel. We are not saved by acknowledging the gospel. We're not saved by merely believing the gospel. We are saved by identifying with the gospel. And it is powerful. I concur with Paul in Romans 1 and 16. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone that believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek there is no salvation outside of identifying with the gospel we identify with his death through repentance that's where the old man dies out and says I'm sorry I'm not going down the path I used to go I'm letting the old man of sin die out we identify with this burial by being buried in baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and we identify with this resurrection by rising up in newness of life through the infilling of the Holy Ghost that's what causes all things to pass away and all things become new and you become a brand new creature in Christ if you have ever wished you could just have a reset in life a reset, a reboot a second opportunity the Holy Ghost is that opportunity for you because it allows you to leave the old life behind and say I'm starting a brand new life as a brand new creature in Jesus Christ and look at the results of this Acts chapter 10 and verse 24 Cornelius called all his family and friends, verse 44. Look what happens while Peter is speaking these words, while Peter is preaching. The Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. While Peter was preaching, they received the Holy Ghost. Look how the Jews reacted in verse 45. They of the circumcision, the Jews, which believed. They were astonished as many as came with Peter. They were like, because on the Gentiles... The Gentiles, God poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. How did they know they had received the Holy Ghost? Look at verse 46. It gives us the answer. For the Jews heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Verse 47. Peter then asked, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Verse 48. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of of the Lord. Let me recap what just happened. Peter preached and it took more than being religious, sincere and devout. You've got to have the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will destroy the prejudice. It's for all people, even Cornelius, a Gentile, out 
insider. We find that after the preaching, or while the preaching was going on, they received the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues. But they still had to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Aren't you thankful for the Word of God that lights our path and gives us direction? Stand with me today, right now. If you're listening online or you're in this house, you may say, but Pastor, it sounds so good. I would love to have that experience, but I'm not of the right pedigree. Cornelius wasn't either. He was a Gentile. It was wrong for a Jew to even enter the home, but God broke down the walls of prejudice, and the gospel message is available to the Gentiles today. Well, I'm a religious person. I don't need the Holy Ghost. Cornelius was too, but he still needed the Holy Ghost. Well, the Holy Ghost is just an emotional experience. If No, it fell on them, and they began to speak with tongues. It's a physical experience as well and it is still being poured out I've come to tell you if you've never received the Holy Ghost evidenced by speaking in other tongues you need the Holy Ghost today you owe it to yourself you owe it to your eternity you owe it to a destiny in heaven for all of eternity to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and with fire to be born again of the water and of the spirit would you lift your hands and love the Lord right now. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want you to thank God for the very first time uh, you received the Holy Ghost. Some were four and five years old. Uh, some were 40 years old. Uh, but it was the same experience. Uh, would you lift your hands and love Him all over this house? Uh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you begin to cry out to God right now? God, baptize me again in the Holy Ghost. God, refill me with your spirit. Let me be flowing with your spirit. Let it be like rivers of living water coming out of me. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I feel the touch of the Lord in this house right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. They're getting ready to sing. I want us to gather on these altars. I realize everyone here has probably got the Holy Ghost. If not, God can give it to you today. I want us to gather on these altars. I think everybody here needs a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost today. I'll tell you why we need it. We're living in a divided day in America. I got to stay full of the Holy Ghost. I got to stay full of the Holy Ghost so I don't get my blood pressure up with what's going on. And I've got to stay full of the Holy Ghost because the rapture is about to happen. I said the rapture is about to happen. And if the Spirit of Jesus Christ, that's the Holy Ghost, dwells in you at the sound of the trumpet, it will quicken your bodies and lift you up into the skies. I need the Holy Ghost in my life today. I want, as they sing, I want you to lift your hands and just begin to thank God for the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost in this day of political turmoil. Well, it's to keep the us Holy safe Ghost and right. Hallelujah. And it's keeping me alive. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. It's the Holy Ghost. Oh, it's the Holy Ghost will break down prejudice. It'll break down division. Hallelujah. It's the Holy Ghost. It's keeping me alive. Jesus is keeping me alive. Down in my heart, it's keeping me alive, keeping me alive, keeping me alive. Oh, it is down in my heart, and it's keeping me alive. Jesus is keeping me alive. Oh, it's the Holy Ghost and fire, it's keeping me alive. Oh, it's keeping me alive, keeping me alive. Oh, it's the Holy Ghost. And Yeah. 
Yeah.